Hey, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about healthcare. What is healthcare like in New Zealand? So I've done some videos on this before, so I'll link them above as well. But today I want to talk to you about my experience actually going through a surgery with my daughter and what I think about the healthcare system based on that. Uh, today and you're gonna want to stay tuned to the end because I have my daughter answer a couple questions on her experience as well so you'll get to meet her and a little bit about her experience uh, with the healthcare system here in New Zealand here we go So over a year ago, if you guys don't know, uh, my daughter, who's now 14, uh, injured her knee at a volleyball tournament up north. And so I'm gonna go through kind of my experience with that and to kind of let you know and some of my thoughts on the, you know, universal healthcare, socialized healthcare, what do you wanna call it here in New Zealand? So this is what happened. So we were up north at a tournament and I showed up and within 20 minutes, she was on the ground and she hurt her knee. And so I took her to, the emergency and we had to wait we had to wait quite a bit i'm going to be totally honest with you on my experience which was fine which is like kind of what you expect in emergency right so probably didn't see a doctor for about two hours and then when we saw him and we're out of town so you know it's like we're guessing where to go you know um we didn't take her to the hospital i think we just took her to the after hours i think it was after hours at that point and yeah, she couldn't put any weight on it, her knee, whatever. So he looked at it and he was like, oh yeah, it doesn't look good. He could guess, but um, we needed to get um, some actual tests done and some x-ray. He, he did an x-ray right there actually, but then we needed an MRI. We needed to look at it closer. And so he then recommended that I go to a specialist and they said that I will create an ACC number for you. And so anybody who lives in New Zealand and is part of the um, public services. If you have an accident, whether it's your fault or not, you can go under ACC and it's, it's like accident compensation, something. And uh, basically, if you go through the process with that number, then kind of everything's taken care of and covered. Uh, and so that was amazing. I was like, really? Okay. And so we had an ACC number, then we got a a specialist in Wellington. So then the next week when we came, you know, uh, the next day we came back um, and I called them and asked if they could switch it to Lower Hutt because I live in Lower Hutt, which is about 30 minutes from the city. And they're like, I'm not taking her in and out of the city. You know, just as a big hassle. I got a bunch of kids. This is not what I'm doing. So I tried to get set with another specialist and that was not working. And then uh, the, the best one that a friend had recommended in Lower Hutt, he wasn't available. And then we were on the waiting list anyway. So because this isn't an emergency, they put you on a waiting list. And yeah, so it was a couple months. So we do have health insurance. So we started thinking, okay, well, maybe we go that route, which enables you to then go right to the specialist. But the problem is due to COVID and different situations, they were way behind. <laughs> so there wasn't getting an appointment anyway. So yeah, uh, we had to wait um, with that. And so, you know, that's frustrating because your daughter is, you know, I understand because I can appreciate that there's people that have emergency, totally get that. Uh, but also, you know, your daughter is a, an athlete and like this could be a huge injury and could be a long recovery and just like adding the months to the process was not great. So my husband was more frustrated with that than me because he's their coach, but I was like, okay, it's fine. Um, we got in. So, but I did make a lot of phone calls. I counted and I kept track just for you guys. I made 14 phone calls just trying to get her organize her paperwork or ACC. I don't even remember because it's been over a year right now, uh, but I did write down a couple of things. Yeah. So like 14 phone calls to get her sorted to eventually get in with this doctor. And so then we did meet with the surgeon. It didn't, it was an ACL and a meniscus tear. It was not good. She basically needed surgery. So we got sorted with him and then it was a wait to get to the surgery. So I think this happened um, in early uh, 20, what was it 2021? Was it 2021? Yeah, early 2021. And then, you know, we didn't even get into the surgery until July. So we're talking like January, February to, or 
or was it no or yeah it might have even been like november december actually no no, no it was january february and then Yes, and then it wasn't until July that we could actually, like the 1st of July, that we could actually get her in and get the surgery. So we got in, really liked her surgeon, had a really good experience with that, but it was all very new. It's definitely different um, than I'm used to. Uh, she did great, uh, and she was just weird just overnight in the hospital, and I stayed there, and they gave me a bed, and it was really nice. Uh, and well cared for, like no complaints whatsoever from a mother's perspective. <laughs> and um, so then, you know, it was a long journey of healing. So it was a long journey of resting and healing, seeing the doctor, oh, it was really great. Like even like the brace that she had to wear before she got the surgery to walk around, just make her life a little bit easier. Uh, that was free. Like it was just weird that I'm just walking out with like what I know to be very expensive things or they are in the US anyway, they're just giving them to you. And you're like, okay, that's wow. You know, crutches, you know, like things that cost a lot of money. And so that was interesting and different. And then the surgery, like to then like walk out and to not get a bill after like staying over in the hospital and, and nobody hesitating with tests, like anything that they felt needed to happen. You know, they did it really, really well cared for. And then we we're on the recovery journey. And then, uh, so the ACC actually recently reduced what they would pay for in terms of the physical therapy that she would need afterwards. And so they pay a portion of it, but it used to cover all of it. And so that's fine. I think we paid $25 every time she goes, yeah, to the, um, the physical therapist, which was a lot, you know, in the beginning. And it's been uh, over a year. So where do we, we're in August. So it's been a year in July. Everything looks good, but she just hasn't passed her uh, physical therapy test. Uh, so like when she was giving her test, her knee gave out. So that was definitely a concern uh, because she's young and she has a 30% chance of re-injure. So the doctor was like, well, we're not going to have her play any sports until we are solid that her knee is in good shape. And of course I agree with that. And so she's continuing with the PE and doing some personal training now and doing a lot better. So that overall, the experience was good. Um, it definitely took a while <laughs> compared to like probably what I've had in the US, but it didn't cost me anything at all. <laughs> and that's crazy to me. It's crazy to me. Like even my son got another side story. My son got COVID like passed out, had ambulance come. Like it was just like a thing. He just was dehydrated. Anyway, that's another story. But he goes in the hospital, they do all these tests just in case. And then he comes out with nothing, like a piece of paper of saying like what he should do to rest at home. Like this was it. I was like, wow, <laughs> doesn't cost anything. That's just so weird, you know? Um, but yeah, so I know that we were just having to have surgery when there wasn't a lot of people there. I know that this often that you would share a room uh, in the hospital. It's definitely not as fancy as the hospitals in the US because, well, they don't have insurance companies and all of the money that comes along with that into making building these big, beautiful hospitals and these networks and whatnot. So, so yeah, it's definitely more of just like actually what you need as opposed to these fancy places to go to. But yeah, it was good. Uh, overall, I'm, I was very happy overall with her service that she got and treatment and she's well on her way to recovery. So fingers crossed that there's no <laughs> re-injuring happening. Okay, well, I have my daughter Sydney with us here and she's 14 at the moment. And so I just told you all about her knee surgery experience. So I thought it'd be fun to have her on here and to talk a little bit about it from her perspective. So I just thought I'd ask you a couple questions about your experience with your knee surgery. Like, how did you feel the surgery went? Were you like nervous in the hospital? Like, what did you think of the quality of the hospital? And like, I guess the care that you got and maybe your surgeon, anything you want to say about it? It was, it was good. It went by really fast when I was expecting a lot longer, but like when I got there, it was it's too early, so I don't remember that much, but yeah, it was early. That's right. <laughs> the whole process just to do it took forever. That was annoying, but the people were nice. Um, after the surgery was just like fast. Well, obviously, but it felt fast. Um, it was painful and annoying mm. to having constantly go to the bathroom <laughs> yeah that's true that but like did you feel like the nurses were helpful oh yeah they were 
constantly checking up. Yeah, it was nice that I could stay there. I stayed in like the bed next to her, so that was fun. Um, but yeah, but it was good. I think it that was that. Okay, so then like we had a long recovery after that with the physio. And we're so, still going. And we're still going, ladies and gentlemen. She needs to pass this specific test in order to continue or to be able to go back to sport. So yeah. So how have you liked that process? Do you think that's been helpful? Helpful? Well, obviously it's helpful. Um, yeah, it's just been hard not being able to do anything, mm. like anything, like, but I just know I gotta keep doing it even though I don't want to because I gotta get there in the end, but. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. It's, it's been a long journey, everyone. It's well, been a long journey. It's fascinating. Well, have you liked your physio? Like, oh, yeah. I, yeah, have... yeah. I like Molly. She's pretty good. I would like her to be a little bit more straightforward with you. Just being like, <laughs> you need to do this. As opposed to, if you're feeling okay. You know, it's just a little bit like. Sorry, she's being nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just like, uh, I think that we all need that push sometimes. Not just you yeah. and your age or anything. But, yeah. So, how is it feeling right now? Like, does your knee feel, knee feel stronger? Or it just feels normal. It like, feels it normal. doesn't feel like anything's okay. wrong with it. And you don't have any pain anymore? Uh, not really. It's kind of gone to the stage where if something happens, it's not really going to Is that really going to hurt? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for sharing your experience with us, Sydney, today. And then, this is the outfit. This is the uniform that they have to wear to school. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. This is like, why don't you stand up? Show them the skirt. See if they can see it. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, we've got, I got some stain. stain on the skirt. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to kids in their skirts. So the skirt, and then sit down. Look at the blazer. It's cute. It's cool. So, yeah, it makes it easy to decide. And then you get, like, pins, depending on how, I guess, academic and amazing you are, right? <laughs> These are not academic at all. <laughs> oh, they're not? No. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's hilarious. Well, this one is your speech and drama on your... She won the business challenge. I wonder did. where she gets that from. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, so thanks for joining us today. I thought that I thought that would be nice to have her on, and I hope that was helpful. All right, so that's the update on the health care in our family recently. And so in my experience, I just thought I'd share that with you because I know a couple of you had asked me about that. And so, yeah, so comment below on your health care experiences. I would love to hear it. Like, I've heard people on my channel talking about how bad the healthcare compares to the US. I would love to hear more, like more like specifics as to what has been your experience. And so like I'm limited. We haven't actually used the health services very often. I would say my my personal experience is it is very different how everything goes through a GP. Um, I haven't always liked my doctors or mm, okay. Um, but you know, that's true anywhere. You just gotta find, you know, the right fit for you. So comment below your experiences with healthcare here in New Zealand, and I'll see you guys next week.